Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. Good morning and welcome to Northley United Church's Summer Worship. Today we uh, invite or we join with Joy Bott, who is a licensed lay worship leader from St. John's United Church in Marathon, Ontario. Thank you, Joy, for your message today, which is based on Genesis 32, 22 to 31, and it's about Jacob wrestling with God. We hope you enjoy the service. Please join me in the call to worship and opening prayer. These summer months offer us much needed time for rest and renewal. Let us come to this time of worship with the same desire to find rest and renewal for our souls. Let us come as the sun shines, as the warm rains fall, as the earth ripens, that we might praise God together. God of hope, wise, gentle, strong, you open a heavy door to reveal what is beyond. You prepare our trust to count for when the material world collapses freeing us from the need to know why things happen as they do, and building the bridge of humility we must cross to you. May hope bring us a new day. Amen. Stir us with your word as we listen for inspiration in your sacred story. Amen. Today's scripture is from Genesis 32, verses 22 to 31. Jacob wrestles with God. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he'd sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? And then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. 
In this reading, we hear God's voice. The Spirit is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Poor Jacob, leaving home, gone for more than 20 years, and he still doesn't get it. He is worldly successful, wealthy, has a large family, and he still doesn't trust God. God is still for him the God of his father and his grandfather, not his. He has been doing fine trusting himself, getting ahead through trickery, cheating, bullying, demanding that he get what he deserves from this God who promised him a nation. Jacob demanded that he be released by Laban, obviously thinking it was generous of him not to ask for payment, when his lifestyle had created his wealth of animals and family at Laban's expense already. I think it is amazing that Laban was able to hold on to his vision of family and not kick Jacob out long ago. And so Jacob leaves with his wives, his servants, two of whom were mothers to his children, his children and the animals he has earned. He traces, he retraces the route he traveled 20 years ago when his parents sent him off to find a wife within his uncle's family. It is a long journey, remember? I wonder if he stopped at the place where he planted that stone, where he dreamed about the bridge to heaven, where God talked to him, where he said, surely God is in this place. All the while, he must have been thinking about meeting his brother Esau, who was so angry with him for his theft and trickery when he left. Would Esau have forgotten? Would Esau still want to kill him? Would Esau be influenced by how successful Jacob was? Would Jacob's success cause even more division between the brothers? And once again, Jacob experienced what might have been a dream or a wakeful experience. Once more, God tried to get through to him. And in the dream, Wake or wake or dreaming, Jacob, who apparently is an experienced wrestler, wrestles with a man, an angel, God. And in this experience, Jacob appears to do fairly well, keeping up with his opponent when it would seem obvious that this opponent is much stronger and wiser than he. Jacob keeps up to the point where his opponent dislocates Jacob's hip which often happens apparently in wrestling, and Jacob knows he cannot win. How disappointing that must have been to Jacob, who obviously gained much through maneuvering his way through life, wriggling out of sticky situations, taking advantage of bad moves by others. But Jacob, the heel snatcher, the usurper, the supplanter, the cheat, knows he cannot win, but he isn't ready to tap out yet. He wants to get whatever he can from his opponent. So Jacob asks for a blessing from his adversary. As he is pinned by the man angel God, he is asked for his name. And he has to reveal that Jacob, his name, identifies him as a con man, a phony, a manipulator, a bully. What a shock that must have been for Jacob to hear himself admit to his opponent who he truly was. Today our Western world appreciates the power people, the power takers, the bullies, those with wealth who treat it greedily. We talk of corporate takeovers, the little person who, after arriving in poverty from a broken life in an old country, is able to be top of the heap, rolling in enough money to make the Forbes list of richest people, able to give huge bonuses to the wealthy, and often arguing against raising the minimum working wage. 
It's a long and arduous journey from the past to the present, and for some, that's fraught with cheating, running away, taking control, climbing the social ladder. How hard is it for these people to even consider changing? Nearly impossible, because a poisonous system energizes itself. And we see on television the need for the estates, the fancy pools, the use of water and air as a right rather than a gift. Can we see ourselves, our desires in this? Do these people ever wrestle with God? If asked when the last bout was, would they say, well, they have no need to wrestle. Their faith is strong and solid, and they're getting what God has promised them. They're the righteous right. Is this a case of blind bias? Do we, you and I, ever wrestle with God? In the middle of the night, during the day, often we sit and worry decisions that we have to make, wondering how best to come to solutions for family, for work, for self, and for others. And I wonder, do I recognize this as wrestling with God? Or do I simply say I'm just using my fresh brain and my own good sense to work out solutions? I have to admit that's really often the right answer. I say I'm wrestling with myself. But you know, I plan to ask God if my rival is God the next time, if my conscience is the Spirit giving me the opportunity to see how to find not the easiest way through, but the best way through the situation. If God asked in the challenge for us to name ourselves, what would we say? Jacob's name means heel snatcher. So he was open to seeing that when he said Jacob, he was admitting to God that he wasn't anywhere near a perfect person. His choices were for his own gain, not the best for everyone. Perhaps for us, being asked to name ourselves might seem not helpful. William, David, Sandra, Anne, they don't have meanings that would set us back on our heels. But think for a moment. If God asked you to name your way of living, name your character, what would you say? And then would you say, well, I try to be such and such, but would you say, I want to decide the way that's best because it benefits others? Or would you say, I make the decision because it benefits me? Because either way is a win-lose decision. And even the winner loses in God's eyes. God and Jacob wrestle. Jacob cannot win, but he demands a blessing before letting go. God doesn't have to do this. Some theologians even suggest that God has probably only allowed Jacob to think he was winning at times to allow him to struggle with himself, to see for himself the right decision. And God blesses Jacob, not just with a hand on his head, not with a prayer, but with a new name. Naming is so important. God says that Jacob will no longer be celebrated for craftiness, but for valor, and his name will be Israel. This name means God contended, wrestles with God, or triumphant with God. I think it's interesting that it means triumphant with God not against God, not because of God, but triumphant with God. A totally undeserved blessing. I wonder if Jacob saw that this blessing really was undeserved. In this action, the truth of who Jacob is becoming, a new man, 
the father of a great nation, is really cemented. Now, traces of the old Jacob will emerge, I'm sure. But he's emerged, he's changing, he's maturing from the callow person that he once was. God has created a win-win situation. Jacob has finally admitted who he was, who he used to be, and he's seen the ungodly behavior. God has renamed him and will see that the promise of a great nation will unfold. And Jacob limps off to see his brother, limps as a reminder of this night, maybe limps as a reminder of who he was. A surprise of all surprises, Esau, who was coming with an army, it looked like of 400 men, greets him as a long-lost brother that he is glad to see coming home. For us, the New Testament story of Jesus can be our transforming moment. Often we hear the question, hmm, what would Jesus do as a response to some wrestling with the problem? You know, we can squirm and slither our way out of difficulties. But asking how Jesus might respond changes the picture completely, perhaps. And we can respond with new selves. Jacob's wrestling led to his humble behavior with Esau. Did he lose anything by this? Not really. He still came home with his riches but one more, probably the most, greatest richness of all, was gifted to him. So first we need to face our individual names. We as the United Church of Canada need to face our corporate names. Can we face the biases we hold because of who we are and have grown up to be? Can we name the colonial teachings that persist through the generations? The ones that you know, we are faced with all the time. We can identify them. They're the easy ones. But opening ourselves to listen and to act on the systemic ingrown biases, those are the tough ones. God knows them. And like God in his interaction with Jacob, God won't expect us to be perfect in our transformation, but will expect us to wrestle with them. Where do we stand with decision-making by consensus with all our relations? Where do we stand with restorative justice, distributive justice, equality? These are great examples of win-win decision-making and discussing decisions. God can allow us to win for our benefit. Isn't it wonderful? God stays on the mat with me and with you for as long as we need to understand the love that flows from God. We might struggle with God through days and nights, but by daybreak, God only intends to bless us. Amen and amen.
Let us pray. We pray in this summertime with our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers of concern, and our prayers for grace, O God. We give thanks for the blessing of warm days and sunny skies, for days of recreation, and for time when we can experience the wonder and mystery of your creation. We give thanks for the water, ordered and unordered, that is all around us in this land, and for the rock that serves as metaphor for your faithfulness and steadfastness. In this landscape, we call the Canadian Shield. We give thanks for the ability to tell your story and the way it has influenced our story. There is so much for which we can be thankful. May we never forget to live our lives in gratitude for all the blessings we receive and so that we can be messengers of that blessing in an ever-expanding circle of thanks and praise. We also pray our concerns, seeking your compassion and care for the hurts and heartbreaks, the sadness and grief, the loneliness and pain that we encounter in our lives on this earth. We know that you are a God of presence, that you find ways to speak to us with love. We know that you call us to be people who reach out with your arms to embrace those who need embracing, to tell our stories that they may console others with reminders of the many ways in which you reach out in love toward us. We pray for people who are facing difficult decisions, for people who are dealing with health issues, for people who are experiencing grief and loss. Send your spirit with love and healing. Reach out through us to be present in times when stories are told in actions alone, because words are not enough or too much. Hear now as we offer our own prayers of concern. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us away from temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
May the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. Our guest preacher today is Joy Bott. I was gonna. <laughs>